Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library after my week of being gone. Sorry about that. I was busy this last week and so I kind of just had to start working on stuff this past weekend. But there is a lot of stuff that has come out recently so I'm going to try and get over it all. The spirit of that, I'm actually currently working on two reviews simultaneously. I don't know which is going to come out first. Originally this was planned but I'm actually re-recording this part because when I uploaded it I got a content warning, so I'm having to redo some editing, and I just wanted to add this in here because I don't think we finished by the Loki it would finish. And I got a delay on this, so we'll see. Anyway, this is a review for The Marvels, the new Marvel movie starring Captain Marvel, Kamala Khan, aka Miss Marvel, and Spectrum or Maria Rambeau. Now, I was actually not really hyped about this movie. Gonna make that very clear from the get-go. Captain Marvel was kind of just meh for me. The original movie was just, it was fine, whatever. And her character is really overpowered and honestly I've been getting a little boring. She's okay as a cameo or a quick thing. You know, she shows up as a badass. She doesn't really have a lot of depth to her, unfortunately though. However, this movie was a pleasant surprise. Now before we get started on the movie itself, I will say that unlike many other Marvel things, Aside from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, this is probably the first Marvel movie that I will say you should definitely at least watch one, if not two Disney Plus shows before watching the movie itself. I would recommend you watch WandaVision so you can know who Maria Rambeau is and how she got her powers, but really, that's more of an add-on. However, the show Miss Marvel that came out on Disney Plus is kind of essential, I'm not, I don't want to say essential watching, but the plot's start is definitely in that show, not in this show. So I would highly recommend that if you have not yet watched Miss Marvel, uh, I have a review for that. I might put it in an IR card above. Go watch that. It's actually a pretty fun show. They did a lot with her character, switching up her power to give her like these solid light projection powers instead of stretching power. So she still creates like stretchy giant limbs, but they're made of like hard light now and stuff like that. It's fun. And quite frankly, the show was one of the more entertaining things that came out during the, I'm not really sure I'm into Disney Plus anymore kind of phase. The Marvels, despite being about a character I was just kind of okay with, and another character I'm just like, eh, it's be fun. And then Miss Marvel, who I mean, you know, think is a lot of fun as a character. I had a good time with this movie, like a really good time. I think I recommend it, and that I'm not really bored with Marvel anymore. I try to be upbeat about all these movies in general because I think it's better to look at what a movie does right than to go on and on about all the ways it's bad because there are enough people on YouTube that do that. But Miss Marvel is a pleasant surprise in a lot of ways. First of all, it is not a two hour or longer movie, which a lot of Marvel stuff has been getting increasingly long and drawn out and overcomplicated. The Marvels is just a quick, snappy, fun ride. There's a basic villain, she's got a grievance with the hero, she gets a magic bangle that is tied to Miss Marvel. And basically, if you've seen the trailers, you already know the plot. Essentially, this Kree leader is trying to reunite the Kree after a civil war tore them apart because Miss Marvel went back to the Kree homeworld in between her first movie and every other appearance we've seen of her, basically, and destroyed the supreme intelligence of the Kree. It was basically like a hive mind AI that ruled over them for millennia. Turned the planet into civil war, their atmosphere is ruined, their water is all gone, sun's burning out, apocalypse scenario. So this Kree warrior has gotten the other one of the bands from Miss Marvel. She found one of them on Earth. This is other one was on a moon somewhere. And she's using it to rip open holes in space using the light speed travel system they have because it can tap into that somehow. During a simultaneous event with both the Bengal, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel interfering with the Kree soldier and Spectrum or Mirror Rambeau trying to look into the whole warp gate problem, their powers get entangled, which means whenever one of them activates their powers at the same time as another, they switch places. There's a lot of like wacky shenanigans that happen when they're first trying to figure out what the hell's going on. It's a lot of fun actually. One of the cool things is that they kind of just go right into this. Like we get an immediate grasp on, hey, this is the Kree soldier bad guy. This is the main protagonist. We got Nick Fury over here being like, get your jobs done. Let's go stop this from happening. It has a very 90s action movie kind of vibe to it where, you know, some ridiculous premise draws the protagonist in, you got a basic bad guy. Although I will admit, despite being a kind of the template for the forgettable Marvel villain we've seen a lot, they do a lot to flesh 
the main villain out. Now, she's not really memorable in the sense that I remember her name. I had to look it up. It's Darben, if you care. But she has a very clear charisma, and you kind of briefly almost forget she's a bad guy and go on her side. But they do have this moment where you see all the Kree with, like, these masks because their ox oxygen is just so polluted they can't breathe. And she's essentially destroying another planet, but she's bringing their at that, you know, untainted atmosphere to the Kree's polluted one to get the air clear. And you have this moment of she's the first one to take off her mask and she takes deep breaths and there are other people and the soldiers are all like, no, 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 leader has to go first. And it's just like this moment of, oh, she was willing to possibly poison herself just to prove to her people that the air is now clean. And she is kind of bringing them, you know, clean air and water and trying to bring their son back to life. Yeah, she's doing it by destroying other worlds, mostly belonging to those who were close to Captain Marvel, who she blames for all this, and who were rebelling against the Kree Empire to begin with. So it is sort of reassert the dominance of the Empire. So she's not a good person. And she's also kind of evil in a few other ways. But she clearly cares and has an objective you know, that to her seems very moral. And it was actually kind of interesting because they don't really do that much to set that up. They just kind of have that one scene. They have her action speak for herself. And you're like, huh, there's some depth to this character. And you know, that one scene on Kree was really all you need to do to kind of make her more memorable than the average Marvel villain. So it points to Marvel for slightly upping their average villain game and for giving us a nice hour and 45 minute romp with Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Maria Rambeau. There's also a really cool mid credit scene with Maria Marbeau. She gets trapped in another reality and we get to see a cameo from Beast. So that was kind of fun. In conclusion, The Marvels is a surprisingly lighthearted, fun, fast paced and enjoyable diversion from a lot of what Marvel's been doing lately. Yes, it's setting up Young Avengers. Yes, it's doing more multiverse teasing. But guess what? It's a really quick, fun movie with an enjoyable core cast who have some actually cool action scenes, some decent villain, maybe not, you know, Loki tier, but definitely above whatever was happening in Thor 2. And all around, this is kind of what I want to see from Marvel. You know, most of their movies are these like B plus, A minus movies that do a good job, get you pumped, have some fun. And then every once in a while we get something like Thor Ragnarok. And you know what? I'm okay with that. So, um, yeah. Moving on from there, we have the announcements. So I'm going to be trying to get a lot of reviews out. I'm not sure I'll be able to get them all out in the next few weeks. I'm not sure what my schedule is going to look like. It's kind of all chaos at the moment. But here are the things that I am working on. So I have a Loki review prepped. I'm working around the same time as this one. Don't know which one will come out first. We'll see. I also have two book reviews upcoming. We have The Iron Flame, which is a sequel to The Fourth Wing, and Murtog, the new book by Christopher Paolini. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the retrospective on the Inherent Cycle out before Murtaugh, but I will probably try and do one afterwards. In addition to that, we also had the Liza P game. I finished it off stream. I'm probably going to be starting Spider-Man 2 soon, so both those are upcoming. And in addition to all of that, because there wasn't enough stuff I had to review, Attack on Titan finished its last season, and I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to be reviewing that. So stay tuned for all that. As they come out, I will probably put IR cards because I'm hoping to get them out soon. But it's a lot of stuff to go over. It's a lot of stuff to do. I've got footage from Liza P. I've got, you know, two books to go through, which takes a little while. So my review schedule for the next few weeks, gonna be a little crazy. Sorry about that. Moving on to there, we have the out card. There's a video YouTube recommends, the playlist of stuff I've done this year, and a link to my channel. Go there and subscribe. It really means a lot. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.